This ain't no video. This a movie. Tell Chip, bring the cameras out. You ain't never seen my movie. No days off. Well, my dad always told me before I leave out the house, know who you are before the world tell you who you should be. So I'm just always true to me, and I believe if you be your true self, then you'll Thomas make it Terrell. to where you Jr. supposed to make Christian. it. My name is Thomas Terrell Jr. out of Washington, D.C. Some know me as Teasers, but I'm also known as the Petty Christian. Uh, I always grew up being a center of attention, making people laugh in the neighborhood, school, church, so forth and so on. But I got started one night. I was hanging out with some friends, and my friend used to bartend at this open mic, uh, RFD in Washington, D.C. So, you know, I was in the back. I guess you could say I was kind of heckling, a little loud, a little belligerent in the back. And the guy was like, well, if you think you're so funny, then, you know, you should come up here and do your joke. It ain't as easy as it is up here as it is down there. So I was like, well, you should have did your jokes from down here. Ah. You know, so the next week I just signed up and, you know, just decided that if he could do it, <laughs> I, I could do it. But it's not as easy as I really thought. But I've been doing comedy going on seven years now. Uh, been enjoying the journey. It's definitely a journey. Uh, like I said, it's definitely hard. It's not as easy as people may think. It's definitely worth it. It's my free therapy because I can't afford therapy. So, uh, free therapy for me. A few of my influences that I've met along the way because uh, DC is full of great talent and known for comedy. I think DC is the real mecca of comedy because you got legends like Tony Woods, Dave Chappelle's from there, you got Tommy Davidson. Also, you got comedy heavy hitters, which is like my OGs, such as Chevis Witcher, Laughing Lenny. Those two guys like took me up under their wings, you know, and showed me the rope. Chevis Witcher was the first guy who took me on the road. Laughing Lenny showed me like the clean version of comedy, like starting to go in churches and stuff. So it's kind of like a he passed me along to this person, passed me along to that person. So I used to come down here thinking I was going on vacation down Newport News, Virginia. Turns up that I was going on vacation Bible school. Like, I guess Virginia churches were better down here or they knew the Bible better, but uh, I hated it. Uh, so, and there was a lot of stuff <laughs> I wanted to talk about at the church that, that get looked over. So, you know, they call me the petty Christian because I address these issues and everybody think them. But I just got nerve enough to say what's really going on. Newport, Newport News is where I got my morals and values from far as life. That's why I wanted to come down here and do it. Uh, I, like I say, my comedy life comes from D.C. and learning that. But my morals and values of life come from down Newport News as far as my family. I used to watch my grandmother, my father, my uncle and aunt all entertain each other. We couldn't go in the living room because the plastic was all on the, on, the, uh, <laughs> on the couch. We couldn't go in the living room, so we had to watch it from the hallway and watch them just do their thing. And, and my main goal in life, like it wasn't really to be a comedian. I just wanted to make it over the line into the living room so I could tell my part of, you know, my part of the story, make the family laugh. So that was my goal, so this, Anything else is just added on. My goal in life was to make the family laugh and make it and so I could sit on that couch and that plastic couch and I feel like I had made it in life. Never got to do it to this day, but yeah. <laughs> if y'all ready, please make some noise. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime.
settle on your feet, clap your hands for my dad, Thomas Terrell Jr. <laughs> Cut it. You can cut it. How y'all doing tonight? I said, how y'all doing tonight? You looking lovely. Y'all knew who show y'all was coming to. Y'all definitely knew who show y'all was coming to. I'm glad y'all came out, man, because right now, we all need laughter. You know, because the price of living is going up, but the chance of living is going down. Everything going up. Rent, food, gas, child support. <laughs> Man, 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 it's good to be out here, man. I want y'all to know something really important. If you don't learn anything tonight, I want you to know that one thing, that God is a comedian. If you don't believe me, open up the book of Genesis. I know a lot of you don't go to church like that, so it's not alphabetical order. <laughs> Genesis is in the beginning. <laughs> so God tell you he's a comedian when the story of Abraham, now, fellas, he told Father Abraham that he was going to have a son at 100 years old. Fellas, he ain't had no blue pills. <laughs> he ain't go to the gas station and get no supplements, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if we keeping this biblical, let's just say his rod was still stretching forth. <laughs> but a lot of people now, you know, they don't understand jokes. You know, they like to rush the stage because they don't have a sense of humor. Which is one reason why I'm doing this in Virginia because it's an open curry state. <laughs> Try if you want to. <laughs> but the way a joke is set up, you have three parts of a joke. You have a premise, you have a setup, and you have a punchline. Now the premise when God told them the joke was that they gonna have a baby. The setup was that they was too old. The punchline, which is the greatest punchline of all, he said, is anything too hard for me? So I want you to know God is a comedian. Think about a joke in life that you've been through. Let's go through them. Relationship jokes. <laughs> we all been through that one relationship joke. We thought they was the one, right? <laughs> now we crying, oh Lord, I want a better relationship. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're single. That's because God wants you to know how to love yourself before anybody else can know how to love you. So you got to learn to laugh at it. I'm going to tell you another joke. Employment. <laughs> we all hate our job. Next thing you know, we fast. <laughs> that's because God got something better for us. But I'm going to tell you the joke that's been going on for these past two years, y'all. It's called coronavirus. <laughs> now, with this joke, a lot of people done lost jobs, but they came out better than what they was with their job. So, except me, because I'm a essential worker. <laughs> but people done lost their job, and guess what? They eating better. Crab legs, <laughs> shrimp, they got food stamps. <laughs> See his black church. Ain't <laughs> walk in, put the finger in the nothing. Okay. <laughs> but even death, because in my church we lost a lot of good people this year, and um, I realized something that you realize that when you look at the news, young people die, old people die, the good people die. That's because this earth ain't our home. So God give you chances to get it right. It's a lady, Miss Brenda. She's so mean, she just won't die.
done survived everything, y'all. She done had cancer. She done had the sugars. No, she not a sweet woman. She a diabetic. Even when the DC sniper was going around shooting people, he missed her and hit somebody else. Every funeral, every church funeral, she be there. I wish it was me. The whole congregation turned around. We do too. We wish it was you too. She, she just won't die, man. So when word came out in the church, you know, I guess she told a few of her choir members, she said, I got the vid. We was voting for COVID. <laughs> COVID ain't win. She's still here. Man, a lot of people wondering, you know. A lot of people wondering, why am I doing this in Virginia? When you come from somewhere with such great comedians, such as Tony Woods, Dave Chappelle, you got my mentors, I'm gonna throw them out there because they helped me. Me, you got me from DC, <laughs> let, me, let me say that. Then you got Laughing Lenny, you got Chevy's Witcher. Why am I doing this in Virginia? A lot of great things that happen in Virginia. You got Ella Fitzgerald, she's from Virginia. She changed the game when it come to music. You got Bubba Chuck, oh, that's Allen Iverson, y'all. He changed the game when it come to basketball. Now they gotta get dressed up when they go to the game. You got Michael Vick. He changed the way we walk our dogs. <laughs> He changed the game or the way we walk our dogs down the street. And then it's, you know, it's historically known that this had one of the greatest villages of all times in Newport News, y'all. Did y'all know that? It's called Petless Village. <laughs> if you don't know what Petless Village, you can get some fake joys, a Coogee outfit, some yawk, and two pit bulls for $35.99. Also, another great thing that comes out of Newport News is my family, the Terrells. They come from out of Newport News. And I learned a lot of like morals from here. Like I learned about Christianity here. And I'm not talking about the religious Christianity. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus. I learned because I don't like religion because it puts you in the box. I think we all can learn something from each religion. Like I got Middle Eastern Muslim friends. And I can feel them, because I wake up some morning feeling like the bomb. <laughs> Matter of fact, I can't wait for my career to blow up. <laughs> then I got friends who Jehovah Witness, y'all. You got to know how life, to handle life when doors get shut in your face. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Christians get the most, you know, get the most slap. Like earlier today, like about an hour ago, I walked across the street. I had my God is good shirt on. So the guy said, hey, if you a man of God? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, when you come out, won't you bless me with some of that paper? <laughs> he said, I'm going to be standing out here. So he read my shirt, God is good, right? So he said, you got that paper? I walked back out, I had to walk back in. Walk back out, he said, you got that paper? Yep, job application. <laughs> Cause if you can read this shirt, I know you read hell wanted on that shirt. <laughs> oh, keep taking advantage of us, man. <laughs> also learned down south, they got a lot of type of Christians. They got the Southern Christians. Now the Southern Christians, they just go to church Sunday, sit on their porch, wave at you. They don't know you, those who are from D.C. They just wave. <laughs> Threw me for a loop too, because in D.C., you better know who you're waving at. <laughs> you're like, is that? Uh, that, ain't, that ain't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I tried to be nice. 
Then they call this the Tide Water area down here. And they have Tide Christians. Just like it sounds like Tide with bleach, it works good with whites, but bad with colors. They got a crazy way that they praise God. They like to play in the laundry. Sometimes they get happy and ride around with the sheets on their head. We learned a long time ago, don't get caught hanging around them. Then you got my family. We the petty Christians. See, a lot of people in church faking and shaking. I'm a true worshiper because they who worship God should worship him in spirit and in truth. Somebody went to church on Easter. Thank you. <laughs> spirit and truth, y'all. A lot of people in church got the spirit part, but they can't take the truth. Prime example. I hate when people ask for my honest opinion. You know, because one of my co-workers, she in a wheelchair, right? So she trying a little Facebook dating thing. So I guess it ain't working out for her. She gonna come to me and tell me, you know what? This year I ain't staying in for no man stuff. I said, well, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, right? Then my cousin, man, my, one of my favorite cousins, Tank, he used to live with me, man. But he got a lazy eye. He got a lazy eye. And we always would get into arguments, and he would come to me and ask me, why do you think we always arguing and we best cousins? I just thought that we ain't see eye to eye. You know, we see things in a different point of view, right? Then, I got my lovely family in the house tonight. Yeah, they in here. They taught me to tell the truth, shame the devil. But they can't handle the truth. My lovely mother's in here tonight. You can clap it up for her. She pushed greatness into the world. She can't take the truth. One Sunday, early one Sunday, we getting ready for church. And she got that Usher uniform on, you know, got them bucks on. She had a run in her stocking from Pella's Village. So she put in that little clear fingernail polish on there, right, y'all? So she looking in the mirror, she said, mm, this dress make me look fat. I said, it ain't the dress. <laughs> she gonna try to beat me. <laughs> Next man, but my father, my father was a kicker man. I love him dearly, but my father, he was in the military. And when he was in the military, he was in a bomb situation, so he lost his arm. So he dedicated his life to God, and uh, he became a deacon. <laughs> He became a deacon in the church. My father could sing. But I didn't like the song he was singing because God put the wrong song on my daddy's heart. <laughs> he was singing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. <laughs> you know, and I got tired of it one Sunday. I said, Stop singing that song. Because <laughs> he done took more than a hand. It took a whole arm. You want to get blessed? He done blessed. You. <laughs> he done blessed you, man. But, oh man. I shouldn't have never did that, y'all. Because one thing you don't do is tell the truth to your parents. Everybody know me as Thomas, but that day I approached him, I thought my name was Jesus Christ. Because when I told him that, he knocked me out. And three days when I rose, 
I looked at him now, I said, why has thou forsaken me? <laughs> Love my family. Family is a Bible-based family. They believe of every word that come out of the mouth of God, they should live by. Like my grandmother used to try to save people through the answer machine. <laughs> you know, she, this is how the message went. She was like, sorry we're not in, but you know who you can call? Jesus. <laughs> He's always there to answer. Then they will argue scripturally. Crazy, scripturally. They will argue. So it was a lady, Miss Betty, who used to come over to the house for dinner. I don't know why she always came over our house. But she will always ask our family to pray for her. She say, Mildred, tell your family to pray for me. She said, hold on. You ain't going to keep wasting my family prayers. <laughs> she said, anything you want from God, you fast and you pray. Your problem is you eating fast food. <laughs> Every time we see you, you got to play the, play the wings and the Mountain Dew. That ain't what the Bible mean by they should mount up on wings. <laughs> you need to go to the gym, lift some weights, burn some calories. She gonna say, Mildred, I can't do that. She said, well, why? She said, because Jesus said lay every weight aside. <laughs> I said, this too much. They doing too much in here. But y'all, my favorite person next to my father and my family was my Uncle Willie Duckett. Willie Duckett spoke things that was in the Bible that they don't like to speak in church. Where the Murray people at? That's right. Especially, I'm glad the men are speaking up. According to my Uncle Willie, did y'all know just by being married, you automatically getting into heaven? Did y'all know that? <laughs> y'all ain't know that. Man, let me help y'all. I'm going to according to Uncle Willie Duckett, this is why y'all getting in heaven. Because you did something that God didn't do. He got Jesus' mother pregnant, but he ain't murder. I know I'm the only one read King James. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's in the Bible. Okay, don't look at me wrong. But I realized, you know, being married is a great thing because you're a representation of God's love. You're supposed to love your wife as Jesus loved the church. Mm. <laughs> that could be a tough thing. You see me start squeezing this? Because women, uh, mm. women are, uh, I see all the black women giving me the ass, so that's why. Uh, they, they're special, you know. Oh, uh, they're special. I'm, I'm going to say they're special. And I got me a wife. And I suggest you get you a wife. I got me an M and an E. She think that stands for my everything. No, that's a man excuse. You could get away with a lot of things with a wife that you can't get away with a girlfriend. Prime example, I shouldn't be saying this, but I feel convicted. <laughs> my family always try to come over my house. I say, my wife ain't feeling good. <laughs> ain't nobody gonna say nothing if it's the wife. But if you say my girlfriend, man, tell her go in the back, man, we coming over. <laughs> Go to work, man, hey, I can't make it in. My girlfriend ain't feeling good. Man, hey, we we'll see you in two hours. <laughs> My wife ain't feeling good. Well, you got our blessings. Did you go ahead and take care of her? All? Ain't nothing wrong with my wife, but I put a lot of stuff on her. <laughs> but when finding a wife, I know they tell you find a godly woman, find a woman in the church, you know, I wasn't looking for all that. I was just looking for a good woman. Because a lot of women know how to pray, but don't know how to work. And I need to help me. <laughs> the prayer work too, but I need to help me. And those who not married, 
If you're looking for a wife, you just gotta find somebody who match your crazy. <laughs> That's all it is. Stop leaving this women because you talking about they crazy, they crazy. I got something to tell you. They all crazy. <laughs> if they was born a woman. <laughs> It's just in the DNA. <laughs> because, man, I almost lost my wife, man, to the fact that she crazy. Because, <laughs> because I said, you know what, woman? I ain't got time for all this. You know, she said, let me tell you something. You climbing up the little fake ladder of success. <laughs> She ain't going to let me be great. I, I'm great here, but I ain't great in the house. You climbing up the ladder of success, and you think these women going to want you? Let me tell you something. You think I'm crazy? But we all crazy. Now, if your woman talking to you facing this way, but you over here, she crazy. She crazy. And I knew she was crazy because we was talking about, you know, when you die, a lot of people don't like to talk about that in a relationship because my wife is number one over my family because I know my family's gonna act a fool thinking they getting something. <laughs> but they ain't. Uh, <laughs> so we talk about death, right? And she's just a little too excited, you know, about it. Like she's more excited than me. So I said, I gotta match her crazy. So she said, what about if I go first? I said, well, you getting cremated. <laughs> she was like, why? I said, cause it ain't about to be no flowers on your burial site and I ain't put them there. I don't know who put them there. So then she said, well, can you at least give some of the ashes to my family? I don't want to give away the good parts. <laughs> In life, or death. <laughs> I'll take her over to the Thanksgiving dinner, but she going back home with me. <laughs> but in being married, like I say, man, that scripture, it help you out a lot in life. Like, cause I don't even argue with my woman no more. I just go straight to the word of God. And the enemy does not like marriage. It don't like togetherness. Anything you do in the world is just pushing separation. So when the enemy attacked you, you got to be able to go to the word of God. Soon as I got married, the enemy attacked me, y'all. My ex-girlfriend called me talking about she can't sleep. I said, well, Isaiah 48 and 22 says it's no rest for the wicked. <laughs> now, fellas, I'm going to let y'all know. We done all did something in our relationship that the woman just won't forgive us for. I don't care. You apologize, turn blue in the face. They won't let it go. Now, I did something a long, 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 <laughs> long, 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 long time ago. She just will not let it go. I stopped arguing, y'all. I just go to the Bible. Do y'all know the story when God was about to destroy Sodom? And he had one rule, y'all, do not look back or you'll turn into a pill of salt. She walking around the house wondering why she feeling so salty. <laughs> <laughs> My family also had jobs in the church. Y'all got jobs in the church? They call it ministry. Anything you do, they just say it's in the ministry. Like, my father was the chief pastor a custodial fed. Basically, he was the janitor, y'all. <laughs> what you do, sir? What, what do you do? Security. security. You be in the security ministry. <laughs> what you do? Oh, what you look like you build. <laughs> you look like you build, yeah. Bob the Builder. <laughs> build house not made by hand. There you go. You know, Jesus was a carpenter, man. Now, do you hold the flag or you? Oh, he don't do nothing. 
This dog get a little pursy. He said, hey, you got my mask on. Don't talk to me. <laughs> but yeah, anything you do, they just say is in the ministry. Like the women in my family, they, you know, they were in the business ministry. I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about telling everybody business. <laughs> they telling everybody business. In the then before Facebook was even invented, they, they tell everybody business. They tell everybody business. And they would do a Sunday out of service. You know, because they had a pastor. Y'all got one of them pastors who got a big imagination, but he called it faith. <laughs> like, they had a pastor, and it'd be like 12 people in the church. And he'd be like, I need 500 more dollars. It's in here. <laughs> My grandmother said, must be in your pocket. <laughs> we done gave all we gonna give. <laughs> but I wanted to do something in the church, y'all. And you know, my cousin, Twan, his name Antoine, but he wants you to call him Twan. He was the choir director. <laughs> he was the basketball player. And I didn't like how he directed the choir. <laughs> like, he was just too extra for me. Like, you know, we'd sing this song, be like, for your goodness and your mercy. He gonna touch my lips and say, for your goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Done with it. I ain't had nothing to do in the church, y'all, so I, I said, you know what? I gotta find something I'm good at. So I joined the ministry, y'all. I joined the club ministry. <laughs> y'all been to the club ministry before? <laughs> oh, uh, y'all just blinking. Y'all ain't never been to the club ministry? <laughs> if you don't know what the club ministry is, that's when you hanging out on Saturday night and you rushing to church, you still got a stamp on your hand? <laughs> oh, still nobody been to the club ministry, huh? <laughs> okay. That's when you've been hanging out Saturday night drinking Hennessy, and you say hallelujah, and you smell Hennessy coming through your pores. I'm the only one being the club ministry. Okay. Okay, I see this is judgmental crew. All right. But through my ministry is where I found out the power of Jesus Christ. Because God would take a bad thing and turn it into a great thing. Now, I was coming home from the club ministry one night, and I was swerving, y'all. And you know when you see the police from the other side of the road, you make that eye contact, <laughs> and you know you get been got. He got me, y'all. But as a black man, it could be scary being pulled over by the police because it's three ways that this could go down. Now, if it's two white cops, leave everything in your pockets because you going to jail. <laughs> If it's two black cops, you cool, because they don't want to do the paperwork. <laughs> now, if it's a white cop and a black cop, this one to get a little funny, y'all. Because for some reason, the black cop always want to outdo the white cop. We down in Virginia, so I know y'all know what I'm talking about. So they pulled me over. If anybody know me, they know two things. I'm skinny and I'm fashionable. Two things that don't work out in jail. So I'm scared to go to jail. I had to do all my time staying up against the wall. Squinch. But my grandmother told me, curry Jesus everywhere that I go. Curry Jesus everywhere that I go. So I got pulled over by the police and the black man walked over to the car. So he said, hey, bro ham. I knew it wasn't no brother saying no bro ham, right? So I said, hey, bro, Ham, do you know why we pulled you over? First of all, if you don't know why you pulled me over, I'm not about to remind you why you pulled me over. <laughs> but I know the real reason why he pulled me over, y'all. He seen me and Jesus in the car, two black men having a good time. <laughs> he say, have you been drinking? I said, no, sir. He say, well, why you swerve? I said, I'm just caught up with Jesus. He say, well, if you're caught up, What's in that red cup? I said, ooh, 
I said, enough of water. Before I could say another word, y'all, he reaches over me, grab it. He say, this ain't water, this wine. I say, look at Jesus. <laughs> he done did it again. The white cop looked at the black cop and said, won't he do it? <laughs> Still went to jail. <laughs> A lot of people always look at me strange when I say Jesus is black. Jesus is black. It says it in the Bible. And I ain't talking about the feet like bronze, because it could have had a tan. Look at the stuff Jesus did. Fed the multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. Nobody make tuna fish sandwiches like a black person. Turn water into wine. If he was white, they would have been drinking beer. White people love beer. <laughs> but I don't want you to think that God only uses black people. He uses us all. He uses white people. Did y'all know that you got to read the Bible like you listen to the news? Some things you can listen to and you know who's black and who's white. I'm going to give you an example. Man on a boat with a lot of animals. Is that black or white? That's Noah. <laughs> Y'all know we don't do no animals if it ain't our animals. We can see two big pit bulls walking down the street. We like, hey, I'm probably going across the street. And then what else made me know that Noah was white? He was on the boat for like 40 days, right, y'all? And the chicken made it. <laughs> Black man ain't about to be around no chicken <laughs> that long. <laughs> also, I'm going to give y'all another example. Floating on a basket, curry a big stick. What is that? Black or white? Black. Black? What y'all say? Black or white? Black. Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> That's Moses. <laughs> Moses was Jamaican. Don't believe me? He talked to the burning bush. <laughs> the most high God. <laughs> and honestly, I just made that up, y'all. <laughs> because as I keep walking over this way, I smell burning bush. <laughs> So God is definitely on this side over here. God is definitely in this area. Right I smell it. It's that loud. It's it loud. It ain't quiet. It's loud. I smell it. This is a spiritual group. And I don't know how far back it goes because my mama's sitting right there. I don't, want, I don't know. We here on vacation, so I ain't. But right around. Yeah. I ain't gonna point no fingers. I'm just gonna say, in the overflow. They spurs you so. No, I smell it. No, I don't see it. I smell it. Oh, man. Y'all having a hard time? <laughs> Everybody look Chinese over here. <laughs> don't point the camera on them. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Got real funny, didn't it? 
Jeg hadde mer joker enn deg, ja. I got so much contact, I don't forget where I'm from. Let me stay on this side. A heathen side on this. something to do in the church, man. So I thought I was going to become a preacher. <laughs> yeah. It's my grunt back there. Something, something wrong? <laughs> but before I go into that, uh, my name is Thomas. I have a biblical name. Biblical name. And like Doubt and Thomas get a lot of slack in the Bible because they told him that Jesus was born again and he ain't believe him. Because Doubt and Thomas knew something that this Thomas knew. A lot of people be lying in church. <laughs> Don't believe me? Listen to some of the testimonies or devotion. <laughs> you hear some of the wildest stuff. Man, lady gonna say she been struck by lightning three times, but God does spare her life. Now, in D.C., it's been 85 all week. When did it rain? <laughs> they put Jesus' name in a lot of stuff that he shouldn't be in. I love testimony, sir, because it was a lady named Miss Betty, right? Now, she had a son, and he wanted a little boy. He's about 19. <laughs> yeah, she... <laughs> She adopted a kid, you know. So she had a son, Chris. And Chris had a headache one night, y'all. And she sent Chris up to her purse to get some pills. So Chris took the wrong pills. I think he was supposed to take a white pill, but he took a blue pill. So his pressure was up. Go with me on this, y'all. His pressure was up. So she said Jesus told her to grab the blessed oil and just rub on him. Rub on it, y'all. She tell us this in church. Now, at the time, I'm on the band. And I'm like, Chris 19. <laughs> Sound like they go together, right? Until his pressure came down. Testified. Another lady. We in convocation. They kicking it off. She found out she got diabetes. She said she ain't worried about the diabetes because Jesus told her she could eat any sweet that she wants. <laughs> now, I'm diabetic, y'all. I want to know what Jesus that told you this. People just be lying in the church, man, just lying. But get mad at me because I tell the truth. Betty. Rub it. <laughs> Other lady just eating all the donuts she wants. Just lying in the church. But I just pictured because I was talking about marriage earlier. You know, God wasn't married. And I talked about how marriage is a great thing. But you know who else wasn't married? Jesus was not married. Jesus could not be the Jesus that we know and read about being a married man. Y'all know the stuff Jesus did? Hung out with the disciples. <laughs> Ain't no black woman going for that all the time. <laughs> She'd have been like, you know what, Jesus? You've been with your friends a little too long. 
Fellas, I'm going to tell you this in case you don't know this and look at your woman right in the eye when I say this. Anytime a woman say little in front of anything, she's tired of that thing there. <laughs> your little friends, your little job, your little car. She's tired of it. But the, the, the thing that I realized that I know a black wife wouldn't be going for this. Y'all know when Jesus died and went missing for three days? No call, no show, didn't answer her prayer mail or nothing. Black woman wouldn't be going for that. He would have been hitting with all the good biblical lines, y'all. Behold, I stand at the door and lock. Let me in. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. You supposed to be the son of God. God ain't told me nothing. And then what y'all don't know is, along with the disciples, they had a chick that went with a Murray with, named Murray. If you don't know the backstory of Murray, <laughs> story round town was. My grandmama said she was a little too fast. <laughs> Hanging out with Jesus and the wife can't go? Mm-mm, she ain't going for that. She not going for that. But, like I said, thought I could be a preacher. Got the suits. <laughs> I got the suits to be a preacher. Thought I got that call, man, because when I was younger, uh, a great man by the name of Bishop Madison. He was in the hospital when he was Apostle Madison, and he told me that I would change the world. So I thought that I would be the next Benny Hinn. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember Benny Hinn used to come with me and say, God! I said, I, I can't just do this in the four walls. I got to go out to the world. I thought I was going to be the next Benny Hinn. When I brought all these suits, y'all, when I brought me a long mink coat that dragged the ground with a train on it, started looking on Carfax, looking at Bentleys and Rolls Royce. God called back, said, wrong number. Because I've been studying these preachers, y'all. I've been studying them. And I go to churches all over and entertain people and make people laugh. And I realize the difference between black and white preachers. White preachers, they go to theological college. They learn the Bible. <laughs> learn the Bible. Black preachers, not so much. They get called on. Like something crazy was happening in their life. Like they was running from the police. And they got away. Now they've been running for the Lord ever since. <laughs> but I realized with my people, you know, our attention span is real short. So we gotta come up with, you know, little methods and stuff to keep the people attention span. So they come up with little sayings and stuff like that. Y'all ever heard these sayings that these preachers come up with? Uh, like push. Anything that you need from God, pray until something happens. Push. Pastor going to tell me, you know why you in debt? I said, why? He said, because you're doing everything but tithing. I thought that's why I was in debt. <laughs> But is there any preachers or elders in the house? Just wave your hand. Okay. All right now. Come on. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Go ahead, stand up. Uh, I thought that was somebody else. Oh, that's. Oh, I. You kind of resemble another pastor. A bishop I know. You kind of resemble. 
I thought he came in here tonight. <laughs> when this air, this ain't gonna be good, y'all. <laughs> we already here now, so. But, you know, my brother, I'm, I'm proud of him, man. He's become a preacher, future pastor. I remember, you know, I'm hanging out with a lot of pastors now. I'm hanging out with a lot of pastors. I remember the only pastor I knew was Pastor Weed. <laughs> pastor Cavassier. I just feel annoyed coming from over here. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't like it. But, yeah, I hang out with pastors now, man. And, and I came out with a saying for them. You know, because a lot of people always ask, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? I came up with a little saying for them. Before replying, understand spiritual hygiene, which means brush <laughs> your teeth. <laughs> Y'all ever had somebody pray over y'all and breakfast just couldn't, oh, uh, you couldn't get connected. <laughs> y'all, I had this pastor pray over me. Breath was so bad, smell like he should have brushed his stomach. <laughs> you ever smell breath so bad, somebody say something and give you gas? <laughs> and he's saying everything with teeth. Lord, today we just want to give you thanks. You've been so terrific. I said, tick tock, Lord, tick tock. <laughs> you can't pray over that's, that's that breath curse. You can't get a healing with that. It's curse. But they come up with also, they come up with different methods. Now, this is going to be funny because y'all ain't going to look at y'all passing the same way no more. But I'm going to give y'all the inside scoop. The first method that they come up with is. The Pharaoh method. Let me hear you say Pharaoh method. Pharaoh. Now, the Pharaoh method is that preacher who just don't want to let God's people go on Sunday morning. <laughs> Preaching through breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But he got that one line, y'all. I'm bringing it on in. <laughs> Two hours later, he's still bringing it on in. <laughs> but y'all don't mess his offering up because it ain't his fault. It's the deacon fault. Because the deacon yelling out stuff crazy like, take your time, pastor. Take your time. <laughs> We've been in here since Christmas. It's Easter. Jesus been born and died on the cross and rose again, and we still in service. The next pastor is the Simon Says pastor. Let me hear you say Simon Says pastor. Simon Says pastor. Now, the Simon Says pastor, he like to direct traffic. Because he liked to play little games with you at first to make sure you're paying attention. So he'll read something like, all things are possible through Christ. And then he'll say something like, few things. And he wants you to say, all things. Most things, all things. Some of the things, all things. All things are possible. <laughs> for those who believe in Christ. That's cool. We just want to make sure everybody woke and paying attention. <laughs> you know, I like to make sure that the people woke. Am I boring you? <laughs> Am I boring you, sir? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Turn this show around, baby. <laughs> Man, I'm too petty. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I don't like the part when he start getting into that turn to your neighbor and say, Pastor. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Who would even say, I like my neighbor? I'm still working on me. <laughs> Judge your uncle. But it ain't his fault, y'all. You got to figure out who ushering on this particular Sunday. Now, if it's them old ushers, who take being a soldier in the army, Lord, too far sometimes, <laughs> and you come in late from that club ministry and they holding that door real tight, <laughs> and you trying to get in, and you peeping through the door and they peeping back at you. <laughs> I 
Because with them older ushers, you don't sit where you want to sit. You sit where they tell you to sit. They be standing on they post. Now these new ushers, they tell you, just come sit by me. I ain't, I ain't standing up. They come sit down by me. I ain't standing up. I ain't here. My feet hurt. I ain't standing up. You usually got the number one ushers, those the older ushers. But the ones that come sit by them, they call them the junior female ushers. <laughs> they don't like standing, man. But with them older ushers, man, you got to sit where they tell you to sit. You ain't know I want to sit by my friend. Ain't none of that going on. So I came in late from the club ministry one Sunday, y'all. And I pressed my way on. Because the preacher said, it's a blessing in the pressing. Whatever that means. <laughs> because they set me in the overflow. Now, if y'all don't know what the overflow is, it's not this part of the auditorium. It's them over there. <laughs> Something I could have did at home. I could have live streamed this thing. So the usher had the nerve to sit me next to my ex-girlfriend. And the pastor was doing good until he said, Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going to get through this. This can't be a word from God. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Turn back to the same neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't over yet. Y'all know what I had to do. I had to put that finger up. <laughs> Anybody here can tell me what that finger means? Everybody just uttering nothing, right? Because <laughs> that's what it means, nothing. <laughs> Well, I guess it mean all oh, yeah. But my grandfather told me it mean you got to go to the bathroom. So when he was leaving out of service, he had three fingers up. I said, ooh, he really got to go. <laughs> That's a number three. That's a wet one. That's a muddy baptism. <laughs> so she all looking at me, winking and blinking with them fake eyelashes. Like one of them old baby dolls from back in the day. Y'all know the one where you lean it forward, open it up, lean it forward, open it up. Winking and blinking at me. So I had to put that finger up. I wanted to put the other finger up. But we was in church. Threw both of them up. Say, hey, pick one. The more higher you get, the better these two. <laughs> but yeah, the, the last pass and I, that's why I try to tell people, read the Bible for yourself. Because you can't put everything on the pastor. Some of the work you got to do yourself. And you got to know when the blind is leading the blind. Because <laughs> a lot of y'all in here just ain't man and y'all don't even know what you ain't man in the Bible. <laughs> you know, but he always catch y'all slipping. And he's my favorite pastor. He's the asthma attack pastor, y'all. You know that, ha, huh, pastor? <laughs> like he got some phlegm or something in this throat, y'all? Like he had COVID before COVID even came over here. Half the time, y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all something. That preacher ain't preaching about nothing. Other Sunday, I'm in church with the asthma attack pastor. He ain't preaching about nothing. He preaching about lunch. But he had the people real involved in everything. He was like, God is good. And all the time, God is good. the other day, ha, I walked into McDonald's, ha, the man said, come on up, ha, my name is Jesus, ha, would you like to try, ha, two fish fillets, ha, for two dollars, ha, and as I went in my spirit, ha, I noticed, ha, when Jesus, ha, fed the multitude, ha, with two fish, ha, in fact, loaves of bread, ha, I went back in my spirit, ha, and I noticed, ha, Jesus, ha, spells his name, ha, J-E-S, ha, U-S, y'all don't hear me. I said, Jesus, ha, spells his name, ha, J-E-S, ha, U-S, I looked him in the eyes, ha, and said, Jesus, ha, is that you? The most high God. 
I want you to know that God ha, is still feeding the multitude today. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Let me get a McPick too. The deal feels so good in my spirit. I see you can't be shame. Ha, the praise God. Ha, if you praise him on the inside, ha, you gotta be able ha, to praise him ha, on the outside. Ha, see, I love me a good deal. Ha, got me speaking in tongue. Ha, I was like, ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it. Doors of the church and they'll open. <laughs> Most times, y'all, when you go to a comedy show, that would have been it. They end on a high note. They best joke. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> that would have been it, y'all. But I'm a little more than a comedian. I'm a Christian. So that means that my job is to help others. And the thing that I don't like about Christians is that they always try to seek the salvation, look for the good in people, instead of seed the salvation in people. Right? I'm teaching now. I'm teaching now. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching now. I'm bringing it on in now. <laughs> Get the collection plate ready, because I'm bringing it on. <laughs> we go in this thing with a bang. <laughs> what you saying this old girl? We about to have a shout good time. <laughs> but I told y'all in the beginning, God is a comedian. And all my friends, like, you could have told us that at home. Why bring us down Virginia? Because <laughs> this is where I found out that God is a comedian. Because I used to suffer with something as a young black man, and I know none of y'all probably ever had this. It's called depression. Yeah, I know, only me. One out of a trillion black men <laughs> have this symptom, so don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> but yeah, so I would, I've tried to kill myself numerous times. Uh, try to shoot myself in the head, I took pills. I would go to people's funeral and be on the bandstand and wishing that it was me that was in the casket. Because nobody show you love until you're gone. And I'm like, why can't nobody show me that while I'm here? And no text, no call, no pen pal, nothing. But my father told me about God, not through the Bible, through a TV show called the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> now, I fell in love with this show when my grandmother passed away because the grandmother would never remind me of my grandmother, short and crazy. <laughs> that was my grandmother, Mildred Terrell. But, <laughs> was short and crazy, and she knew how to tow the pistol. <laughs> that's, that's where I get it from. But, I would look at this show and my father called me one time when I was down here, and he had moved down here, and my grandmother moved down here first. She passed away. Then my father moved down here. He passed away. So then when my aunt said, you moving down here? Uh, <laughs> it's a little too peaceful down here. <laughs> But my father walked in the bathroom and uh, I had his gun in my hand. I was trying to shoot myself in the head. So the Beverly Hillbillies was on at the time. So he just grabbed the gun when it sat on his recliner. So he said, let me teach you about God. Well, I'm thinking he gonna break the Bible out, y'all. Beverly Hillbilly song, come on. Now, if you ain't had cable, I'm sorry. But it was a good song, good theme song. And it speaks. It speaks all Babel. It speaks all Babel, a theme song. Because you got to catch people where they at. It's most high God. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's like really throwing me off. 
I'm trying to have a serious moment. <laughs> and this thing is loud. <laughs> that thing must be fresh in the parking lot. Parking lot ministry. Parking lot ministry. <laughs> or a lot of pot ministry. <laughs> but y'all, he was like, let me teach you about God. So the story, the uh, song was a little crazy. It's like, here's a little story about a man named G. Poor mountaineer barely kept his hand fed. Then one day he was hunting for some food. <laughs> Up from the ground come a bubbling goo. All that is black gold, Texas tea. Next thing you know, old Jesse Millionaire, Ken Fo said, Jay, get away from there. Then he moved to Beverly. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> the Beverly Hillbillies. He said, look at God. I said, what? He said, look at God. Because one thing I realized in that song, and everybody just sing it for entertainment, but they don't realize that Jed missed. Jed was hunting for food to feed his family. He missed, because God had something better. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God will take your misery and turn it into your ministry. So, uh, I'm going to have a DJ. We're going to end this out in DC praise type party. So, uh, y'all got y'all show shoes on? Y'all got some Come on, DJ. Let's, let's go. They going to like this. God bless y'all. Good night. My dream, my dream. Jet, jet, hey. Yeah. My dream, my dream. God bless my truth. Hold up. Uh, God is my truth. God is my truth. God is my truth. Yeah. God is my truth. God is my truth. God is my truth. Yeah. God is my truth. God is my truth. God is my truth. Yeah. God is my truth. God is my truth. Dripping in glory, y'all loving me. Dripping in glory, y'all loving me. All this dripping on me, baby. Dripping on me, baby. Dripping in glory, y'all loving me. Well, I can live. Glory to God. Check on my list. Giving them praise. Flicking my wrist. Come running over. I'm taking a sip. I'm running it out. You running your lip. Been walking it down. You hoeing I trip. They don't stand a chance. I can't even sit with all this glory on me. Lighting up in that deep. Lord, let it fall on me. Feel I'm on my knees. What is on me ain't changed. Got it from God for free. Money don't grow on trees. But I'm worth every seed. Plant my feet. God is my truth, God is my truth, God is my truth, yeah. God is my truth, God is my truth, God is my truth, yeah. God is my truth, God is my truth, God is my truth, yeah. God is my truth, God is my truth, driven in glory.